Okay, case number two. Two-year-old boy with fever and lymphadenopathy. Lateral scalp radiograph and an axial image of the neck uh, indication rule out abscess. Select the most appropriate diagnosis. Lymphoma, rhabdomyosarcoma, mononucleosis, or cat scratch disease. Always remember to look at that scout radiograph, which many of our residents and fellows forget. Given these images, what is the next most appropriate test? And MOC likes to do this. They, you don't get the answer, and they go on and ask you another question not really knowing what the first question's answer was. Do we do an MR, a gallium scan, a monospot antibody test, or FDG PET? And the answer is monospot. Mononucleosis, acute EBV is infectious mononucleosis. Lots of patients get this. I was always taught adolescents get it. You know, the 13-year-old, the, um, the high school, junior high school patient. But we see a lot of young kids with mononucleosis. So it's something to think about even in that younger child. The key is adenopathy, palatine tonsil enlargement, and adenoid enlargement. They come in with fever, weakness, malaise, sometimes very general um, symptoms and nothing specific. On a chest x-ray, the old teaching is if you have splenomegaly, think about it. Also remember that you can have EB encephalitis and CNS changes. Typically, the children have a shorter course than the adolescents. This is another patient with the exact same imaging findings. Huge adenoids, totally or nearly obliterating the nasopharyngeal and the oropharyngeal airway. Thank goodness we didn't have to sedate this child large palatine tonsil, cervical adenopathy, diffuse bilateral symmetric enlargement of the adenoids with a lateral retropharyngeal lymph node. Lymphoma can involve Waldair's ring, palatine tonsils, adenoids, cervical nodes, but not usually symmetric adenoid plus palatine tonsil plus cervical nodes. This is a patient with nasopharyngeal lymphoma, Rhabdo can involve nasopharynx and region of the adenoids, but again, not usually the adenoids themselves, likes to destroy bone, likes to be heterogeneous, and particularly in the region of the nasopharynx has a fairly high incidence of intracranial extension. Cat scratch disease, I mentioned, just because a lot of people forget about it, we do see cervical adenopathy in these kids. The most likely place for kids to get nodal disease from cat scratch is epitrochlear. That's sort of the classic, but also ax axillary, uh, femoral, and cervical nodes. Again, another disease that can involve the CNS, liver and spleen. Usually not palatine tonsil and adenoid because these are in areas of drainage from the original injury. You usually get a scratch or bite. They don't present for one to four weeks later, so frequently they forget that the child had a scratch or a bite. This is a gram-negative bacillus, and the favored term, at least the last time I looked last week, was Bartonella Hensley. <clears throat> Case number two. Number three, a febrile two-year-old with a 